Hi, my name is Jean Tétrault, conservation scientist. Here, a presentation about air tightness measurement of enclosure. Enclosure could be uh, display cases, uh, storage cabinet, transportation cases. In this presentation, I will cover different aspects of air tightness, starting with a definition, notion of the physics of air movement, detection of leakage points, quantification of the air tightness, and how can the air tightness value uh, can be used in other indoor quality equation. We'll have uh, one case today which will show how is the air movement with a, a two-part display cases. And we'll see quickly the effect of uh, the material in the enclosure and the effect of the fan on the air tightness value. A definition of the air tightness, you could imagine uh, an enclosure, a box, and the air, the same amount of the volume of the enclosure go in and get out of the enclosure. So this uh, figure show one egg change per day. It is the air volume equivalent to the enclosure volume is entering and leaving the enclosure every day. The air tightness with the symbol of N is defined as the number of time that air is replaced in enclosure every day. The unit will be one exchange day or exchange day. Here the, uh, the physics of the air movement. Let's go by the faster to the slower. Number four, the faster is kind of the, it is, sorry, the uh, stack effect. So the air infiltrate to the gaps as the rising warmer air causes a lower pressure at the cooler base and uh, the air get out on the top where it is the rising warmer less dense air exfiltrate to the gaps number three is when you have uh, important fluctuation of temperature and pressure change and that will force air to get in and to get out number two is when you don't have much uh, pressure change and the gas will diffuse through still air in gaps. Number one, you have the gas diffusion through permeable construction material. To minimize the leakage, you have to find the leakage point. Um, that could be done by visual observation. You look with your own eyes to see if you could see obvious crack. If it's not too obvious, you could use what we call that uh, friendly, uh, the paper test. Are, we, are you able to insert a piece of paper? Uh, you could do the same thing with the credit card. Can you insert credit card in your cases? Here, as a joke, you could see uh, how airtight is the cases if people can insert coins inside the cases. When we don't see a visible gap, you could use some instrument to help you. You could e either use the tracer gas leak method or the ultrasonic method. With the tracer gas, what you do, you could use a kind of a spray can air duster that we use to clean computer and shoot some air in the cases. You close the case, wait a little bit, and then with a leak detector or a refrigerant uh, leak detector, you could try to detect where the gas can leave the cases. So you have a gas detector that detects the gases leaving the cases. The other method by is by using ultrasonic method. Basically, you have to put inside the cases uh, ultrasonic emitter, and then you have your instrument would be ultrasonic detector. So uh, while the emitter is inside, they will release ultrasound, and then your instrument will try to localize where the sound is leaving the cases. Now, how to determine the, uh, the air tightness of your cases? First, you, uh, th that method is based on the CO2. So we need a CO2 injector. Here, down left, we have two types of uh, CO2 injector, one commonly used for bicycle and one with a kind of a valve that you can regulate a bit the, uh, the flow. 
So on the sequence that you see on the top, you have uh, A, you have your CO2 monitors, you inject some uh, CO2, close the, uh, close the enclosure and wait the time as the, the CO2 will leave the, the cases, you will have a CO2 concentration decay. A little note about the, uh, the CO2 cartridge you could use. Uh, the, the one that have no specification may smell gases. So it's not the CO2 that you smell, but it is in the impurity inside that, ga that CO2 cylinders. And uh, if you want to measure the atomicness of the cases with the collection, you better go with uh, full grade or pure CO2 cartridge. If your case is empty, maybe you could use this type of uh, CO2 cylinder used for uh, paint, uh, paint game, uh, shooting paint game. And uh, that's not the big risk if there is no collection. And you have your monitors. Uh, we use a kind of wireless monitors, but uh, you could use, uh, yeah, it is best to use a, a CO2 monitor that is wireless so you don't have to deal with the wire in uh, crossing the, the cases. And you, that monitor will accumulate the CO2 value per every uh, frequency that every minute or half an hour or something like that. Here, a typical result you may get. Uh, after accumulated uh, that CO2 data, here you can see we have the CO2 concentration that will start around a bit more than 4,000 ppm. And then with the time, uh, after many days, you could see the decay up to uh, seven days. And uh, the red is what is inside the cases, and the black line uh, down the graphing is the, we will say, the background level or the le level of CO2 outside of the cases. Now, if you want to determine the air tightness, our and then the symbol N, this is the uh, you either the the easy one, but not the most the best and the most precise, is by taking two points during the decay process and they use the equation you see on the screen by using the natural log compared to what is inside and outside at the beginning at the end, and you get your uh, N value. Now, what I would probably uh, suggest that you use is to use this approach. Then you, instead of having a graphing with the CO2 concentration, then you will lose the log of the CO2 concentration minus the concentration from outside. And when you uh, draw that graph uh, as a function of time, you could see that is a slope, this is a linear slope. And uh, as long as you have a linear relationship, that's mean that you could use that uh, range of data uh, for uh, the atomicness determination. So our equation is the same than the image before, but uh, you could see where the relation is no longer good. That's mean that the relation, the, you have a steady decay over the time from, let's say, half day up to about five days beyond five days then is a shift that means the the you have the decay been changing and because you're too close for the uh, background level so your um, good range to take a number to draw the line is somehow between 0.5 days up to five days and in that uh, cases that they, that experiment the early cage is 0 0.32 per day now, how long you should run the test? Well, uh, we have seen um, uh, with the different uh, tests that sometimes it takes up to 40 hours to reach a stabilization. You could see on the graphic here, before one day, uh, the construction is still building in the cases. You don't reach the equilibrium cross the enclosure. So we have to wait, in that case, up to one day. And then uh, after a bit before three days, then you don't have, you are no longer in the linear relationship, so you should stop. So the the good range of for the experiment you take data from one to let's say two point eight days. So if you want to do a quick test to have an idea how can be the air tightness quickly, then you could run it 
like uh, the full day or overnight to have an idea. But if you want to measure the leakage, the air tightness for, let's say, certification, you may want to run at least for four days because you may have one or two days that you miss, uh, you cannot use because of the lack of equilibrium. And then uh, hopefully that with four days, you have enough good data for the calculation. Here's an example of uh, the determination of air tightness and what kind of information we get from that. Here we have a cases that we have two CO2 sensor, one on the top where usually you display your object and the bottom where you may have uh, nothing or you could add uh, some silica gel to uh, control the relative humidity of the overall cases. Now we inject the CO2 from the low part of the cases and uh, on the top uh, right graph you could see the CO2 decay uh, where you could see the, re the result of the CO2 uh, reading. So the black line is uh, the CO2 on the top that at the beginning is a zero and increase a little bit and the red line is the sensor at the bottom where received the CO2 first. So at the beginning it's very high and then after uh, up to one day, one day 0.5 you, you can see that we reach equilibrium, that means the concentration of the top and bottom are the same, and then they decay the same level. The graphic just below, or we are still on the right side of the image, but the graphic just below, like we could see the log scale. Basically, you see the same pattern. That means you take the same amount of day to reach equilibrium, and then you have kind of a slow, steady decay. And based on that, you could see, uh, we could determine that the air tightness uh, from uh, the outside and inside the cases is about 0 0.3 exchange day. Now, having two the sensor, if we compare, if you do the graphic of the log of the data logger from the top uh, down compared to the data logger of the top, you could see the similar graphic. Uh, and then you could see from about uh, 0.25 days up to close to 1.5 days, a bit less, let's say 1.3 days, you have a linear slope. And that slope uh, help, uh, will give an air tightness or air movement of 2.9 air change a day. That means that uh, the air movement between the top and down is about 10 times faster than the air movement from in and out the case, which is very good. That means that if you have silica gel, uh, the sick gel will be able to catch the humidity or the air change um, easier than what can go inside or leave the cases. So that's a very good system that's very well airtight and the air movement inside is work very well. Uh, <clears throat> You could uh, sometimes what it take time to reach equilibrium is sometimes with the big cases you have like uh, other sub uh, or multiple compartment that may need to be equilibrated with uh, what is the major volume of the closure and those kind of uh, extra volume could be one uh, down the cases is where is the the lower compartment of your cases where you put your schedule. This is one kind of room or sub room. And you could also have time to time a fragile object that it has its own cases in the cases, as you can see number two. Sometimes with number three, you have a base, a stand that object uh, are deposited on the top of it. And those uh, base stand, they could have also their own uh, internal volume. And number four, some object like a taxidermy animal uh, could have also inside there, but they have empty air or volume of air that also will need to be equilibrated when you inject the CO2. By knowing the uh, air tightness of your cases, this value can be used the other equation that is quietly interesting to know in conservation. Uh, the first equation you may see on the top left is the quantity of silica gel that you need to control a specific amount of humidity in your cases. So you need to know the air tightness because if is it leaky, then you may need more silica gel to be able to buffer in the humidity that want to move fast in and out.
and if the cases is very airtight, so you will need less silica gel because uh, the movement of uh, water vapor will be small. The other equation you may have interest is uh, what is the uh, ratio of uh, the pollution outside and how much it will be inside the cases. So from an external source of pollution, what can how this uh, external pollution will be, how much of those can infiltrate the cases that will also depend on the air tightness. The third question down is uh, uh, it's kind of the re uh, opposite scenario is when the source of uh, emissive gases is inside the cases, then you want to know how much ventilation you may need, how much uh, leakage you may want to keep the concentration of the undesired gas inside the cases as small as possible. So that's the third equation. So you can see that knowing air tightness of your cases may help to do a better risk assessment. All the units are being defined on the right side and uh, you could free this image to uh, study that further. An example of the source inside the cases and what could be the impact based on the different air tightness of uh, the cases, you could see uh, and apply with, uh, this is an example where we use, uh, uh, let's say a piece of wood that releases acetic acid. We have a piece of oak and inside the cases that we know that release the acid. But you also know that the lead is also quite sensitive to acetic acid vapor. So on which condition we will be at high risk of corrosion or low or no risk of uh, corrosion. We also know that a shiny piece of lead is more sensitive to, uh, to the corrosion to, uh, by acetic acid and when it is tarnished with the stable um, tarnished layer then you, you need more acid concentration to cause further corrosion, the undesired corrosion compare as compare as the kind of stable tarnish layer of patina if you want. So based on sperm air tightness and also it's also based on the the volume of the load. So how much is the surface of the wood compared to the volume of the cases. So if you have high surface um, and airtight, then you most likely having corrosion. So you can see that if you look to the left of the graphic uh, as the load is high or the eye tightness has a small number, the risk of corrosion is high. When it is well ventilated or the surface is small, it's very uh, easy to prevent the corrosion. So that's why you could see from your own cases what could be the risk based on the source and the material inside the enclosure. We wanted to know also what could be the effect of the material when you do when you determine the air tightness in your cases. We want to know if some object in the enclosure in the display case can influence uh, neg negatively the air tightness value. So we have done it with activated charcoal or activated carbon, with silica gel with different type of wood and books and the control, which is empty cases. Usually we do everything with empty cases, but some, this time we want to know what could be effect. And what you could see uh, from as compared to the control, you may see that silica gel almost have the same pattern and fluctuation than the control. That is new. That's mean the silica gel have little effect on the air tightness value. When we tested with the wood and books, we have about the same slope, so same slope, same air tightness, but it's this kind of a buffering effect that the CO2 uh, the, this be somehow buffering by the wood in a, in a way that they delay the absorption or delay the desorption, but not really affecting the overall result. What was very surprising is uh, when study with uh, activated carbon in the cases, we have a different slope and a very noisy signal. So somehow, uh, active charcoal effect absorbs. It's very sensitive to CO2 change, 
and also you could see the test have been done between a temperature range of 17 to 21 and you will see the next slide uh, if the effect can be different if the temperature fluctuation is less and this is the result we have the done uh, actual charcoal at a range of in, the, in we have done that decay in the temperature range of 17 to 21 or the next step the blue line we try to minimize the temperature fluctuation from 17 to 18 and realize that uh, the, uh, the slope is uh, is less higher and getting close to the silica gel and the silica gel is the green line is the control also at low temperature fluctuation so really prove that high temperature fluctuation with actual charcoal will give you kind of a better result better wrong result and very uh, noisy signal so obviously um, wouldn't test other materials so to be safe it's better to test your cases empty and uh, with kind of a minimal uh, temperature fluctuation that will help we wanted to know the effect of the fan in the cases uh, some people think that uh, waiting one day, two days to reach equilibrium is too too slow. So if you could use a fan, and then the the air of the CO2 in the enclosure will be mixed faster. That's a good uh, th that's good idea. But what we found is it's okay to use a fan to force the well mix of the CO2 through the enclosure. But when you want to measure when you want to collect the data for the air tightness the fan must be off because we find an effect that's mean when the fan we use a fan with a low speed or medium speed the fan it's kind of computer fan and uh, realize that as the as we have a medium speed we have a high slope that's mean that we have uh, uh, high, uh, high leakage and compared to a low low speed obviously uh, a fan the air movement in the cases will will don't will not give you the right amount of the leakage rate or the air tightness so it's okay if you could use the fan you have to find a way to turn off your fan before you collect your co2 for the calculation what is then the advantage of measuring to, the advantage of having high air tightness so low air change rate or low leakage is diving something airtight you prevent the infiltration of the gas and the dust from the outside you prevent them the outside to go inside and you also could have a better control of the humidity uh, with or without silica gel uh, that's uh, interesting because silica gel is not free and uh, if your cases is very airtight then you would prevent uh, either insect to get in or if the insect is already in to prevent them to get out and infest other uh, object the disadvantage it can be ten pieces, some museum tend to request a very airtight cases and it could be technical, technically uh, difficult to achieve so people tend to ask a lot and uh, sometimes the display case maker cannot do that or the design of the cases is not designed to be uh, uh, very airtight uh, and when you have something very airtight if the source of gases or the humidity is inside uh, it, it, it could have high concentration and that's probably sometimes not desired sometimes when the source is too high you better want to have a more leaky cases uh, you remember my example of uh, oak releasing acetic acid that could corrode lead if the the surface of the material is too high too big and or if the cases is too airtight you could have high concentration of acetic acid which would cause a high pop uh, high risk of uh, lead corrosion this lecture it is based on the freshly made uh, technical bulletin or air tightness measurement so it could be free online at the CCI website or if the address is too long you could just google uh, CCI TB38 and you probably get the link easily and in the in the document and in the web uh, 
um, document, you could have access to a link to download an Excel file. And uh, they give you an example of uh, how to make a graphic, how to um, um, put your data on Excel and the, the format and what kind of uh, graphic you may get in the result. And uh, the graphic that you see here, uh, the equation that we use in the TB are also in this Excel file. So you could then modify it as you want with your own data if you wish. So for, to conclude, uh, before measuring air tightness, uh, if you want something airtight, you better find the leakage point first with a different method, visual, paper test, or with an uh, instrument that will uh, better start with that before start to measuring because it may be just too leaky at the beginning. I also prefer when people want to determine the air tightness is to use uh, the regression analysis, like the line, the straight line with the log scale, then you're just using two points because if the, by the noise of the signal, if sometimes the two points you choose, one is too high, one is too low, you may have a, a less precise value of the air tightness. And for a quick uh, test, yes, you could run it during the full day or overnight to have an idea. But to, to have something more serious as a final result, you better run the CO2 decay up to uh, four days and hoping that you didn't reach saturate the results of your monitor because if you measure if you shoot too much CO2 and you have saturated result for two three days before the decay that's also a, a problem so hoping that the four days is no more than one or two days of equilibrium or saturation of the CO2 value and we also seen that some material may uh, interfere with the result and the fan is not uh, good to use when you want to um, collect good CO2 decay value. And uh, the, when you know the tightness, uh, we have seen three equations that may help you to uh, predict, to calculate uh, some scenario and have a better idea to uh, do some risk assessment. So this is how I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.